Section 3.3, measures of relative standing in box plots. So let's look at quartiles. So we're gonna be looking at, in this section, quartiles, well, medians are really part of this. Uh, medians, quartiles, percentiles, quantiles. Um, we'll be looking at those mostly. And so, uh, of course, we'll also be looking at the things that, the graphical ways of looking at a box plot uh, and things like a uh, five number summary. So, if you remember back when we were talking about um, the median, I said that there was not agreement upon what is meant to be the mathematical definition of agreement of, of a median. So in this section, there are going to be several differing ways to calculate each of these, and I'll be uh, describing all those differing ways. Yep. But they have a similar idea once you know how to calculate them using this concept, then using differing formulas won't be uh, difficult. So first off, a, quant a quartile. So suppose I have some data and I sort it from smallest to largest. So let M, little m here, be its minimum value. Let capital M here be its maximum value. Now let's divide my data into two equal pieces, you know. And so let's find the median, the middle point, and cut it into an upper half and a lower half. So this is my median. I'll call the median my 50th percentile. It's where half the data is. Or I'll call it the second quartile. Well, I'll explain that later. And so now take the median of the lower half. That gives me my first quartile, the 25th percentile. And so if this is the first quartile, then the median here is gonna be the second quartile. Now let's divide the upper uh, half into um, half. So let's cut this in half. We'll call that the third quartile or the 75th percentile. And so these measures of location first quartile, second quartile, third quartile. Divide this data into four parts. <clears throat> so the first quartile separates the bottom 25% from the top 75%. The second quartile, the median, separates the bottom 50% from the top 50%. The third quartile separates the bottom 75% from the upper 25%. So the first quartile is the same as the 25th percentile. Second quartile is the same as the 50th percentile, which we also call the median. And the third quartile is the same as the 75th percentile. So now, what I had said before, a few minutes ago, will make more sense, because now you know what this notation is. So the interquartile range is the difference Q3 minus Q1. And so the semi-interquartile range is one half of the interquartile range. It is one half of IQR, the interquartile range. It is Q3 minus Q1 divided by two. It is usually called the quartile deviation. So my quartile deviation, the semi-interquartile range, is one half Q3 minus Q1. This is a measure of dispersion. So this is a measure of how this uh, how dispersion, how, uh, what the dispersion is of the data, how spread out the data is. 
similar in some, well, using the range rule of thumb, you see this is similar to what the uh, standard deviation is. At least relatively uh, similar in size. The mid quartile is, well, <clears throat> the mid range of the middle 50%. It's the first quartile plus the third quartile divided by two. Let's do an example. Suppose I have the following data 1 1.4, 3.14, 5.3, 7.18, 9.4, 10.1. .1. Notice that this data here is sorted. Use the Y goal method and Excel, Excel old method to compute the first and second quartiles. So the data has been sorted from the smallest to largest. Let me give you some notation because this notation is going to be used throughout this section. It's uh, helpful. So let I be the integer part of K. We truncate K. It's also called the floor of K, or so from previous classes, uh, we call this the floor of K, the greatest integer less than or equal to K. So suppose I have uh, the number I here, 2.25. Suppose I have the number 2.25, then the integer part is the two. It's where you get rid of, I don't care about, so just get rid of truncate disregard the fractional, the decimal. So anything involving decimal and to its right, just get rid of it, just ignore it. That is the integer part. And so that's the integer part of this. And so the fractional part is, well, everything else, take the number and get rid of the thing you just, you know, the integer part. So the fractional part of K is just, the fractional part of K is just K minus I, the integer part. And so in this case, it's just the 0.25. So let's use the Weibull method to compute the first quartile. Well, quartile. So I did, if you remember the way I constructed the quartile, I took the median of the median. So I did half and then I did half again. So that's one fourth. So for the uh, Weibull method, K is equal to one fourth times N plus one. N in this case is eight, two, four, six, eight. Plus one is nine divided by two is 2.25. So the integer part is two. The fractional part is 0.25. Um, it really should say decimal part, but if you look at, oh, let's say, Here. So if you look here, the integer part is two. And unfortunately, they give the name fractional part as the decimal part. So they the rest of it is called the fractional part. So unfortunately, there is a, and this was really done by calculators. They call the integer part this part and the fractional part of this guy. I always think it should be called the decimal part, but that's not his term. It's called fractional part. So the integer part of this number was two. And well, the part that only involves the Decimal, the fractional part is 0.25. The 
find the first quartile using the <clears throat> Weigel method, we will use the following formula. It is the number in the ith position, I here being the energy part, times the complement of the fractional part, so one minus f, plus the fractional part f times the number in the i plus first part. So the complement of 0 0.25, 0 0.75 times the number in the second position, 3.1, plus the fractional part, 0 0.25, times the number in the next position, 4, is 3.325. Let's use Excel old method to determine the uh, first quartile. Well, K is equal to one fourth N plus one, 2.25. If, so the idea of Excel old method is, well, you round to the nearest integer. So if this is 3.25, I'm sorry, this is 2.25, then we round it to look at the ith number. Suppose this was 2.85. Then I would round it up to say it's three. I look at the number in the third position. If this was exactly 2.5, then it's halfway in between. And like what we did before, you add them up and divide by two. You'd add up the two middle terms and divide by two. So. Let's do this. So K is 2.25, which you round to two. You, the nearest integer is two. So we'll take the number in the second position, which is 3.1. Let's use Weibull method to compute the second quartile. Oh, these are going to be the same. And so K is equal to 1 half N plus 1, 4.5. Integer part is four, fractional part is 0.5. So the second quartile is the complement of the fractional part. Again, it'll be the same thing, 0.5, times the number in the ith position, the fourth position, 5.3, plus 0.5 times the number in the next position, 7.1, is. 6.2. Let's use Excel old method. And so K is going to be the same, 4.5. But since it's halfway between 4 and 5, we take the number in the fourth position, 5.3, and add it to, and find the average of what's in the fourth position, 5.2, uh, 5.3, and the number in the fifth position. 7.1 and find the average of those two. So 5.3 plus 7.1 divided by 2, 6.2. We actually get the same answer. Um, for the median, we'll actually always get the same number for the y -O method and Excel old method. So now percentiles. So for percentiles, well, Quartiles, we divided this into four pieces, first, second, third, and fourth. For percentiles, we'll divide it into 100 pieces. The linear, interpol the linear interpolation formula for group frequency distributions is the same that we got from uh, the previous section when looking at medians. It is L plus H over F times K minus C. So L, the lower class limit for the percentile class, H, the class width of the percentile class, F, the frequency of the percentile class, C, the cumulative frequency for the class preceding the percentile class, K, the position. Um, but now let me list all of the different formulas for the position. So in the California method, oh, 
that's the first method. In the inverse empirical CDF method, that's the second method, or in the empirical averaging method, the third method. So in any of these three methods, K is equal to N times P. In the Weibull method, in the true basics, uh, statistics graphic toolkit, and in Excel old version method. So in these three uh, methods, K is equal to N plus one P. In the mode based method, K is equal to N minus one P. In the closest observation to QN and in the hydrologist method, so in these two methods, K is equal to NP plus a half. In the median base method, K is equal to 3N plus 1P plus 1 all divided by 3. In the normal distribution method, K is equal to 2 times 4N plus 1P plus 3 all over 8. So uh, you have like five different one, two, three, four, five, six. You have six different uh, formula to find what the position is. Now, this is not an ex, ex, you know, exhaustive list. Uh, I'm sure you can find other methods that are used uh, by other people, but these are like the top dozen um, different ways to compute um, quantiles or percentiles. Professor, I have a question. Yes. Um, on the first quartile, um, you use the Weibull method, but um, why is it one fourth instead of uh, one, uh, two in the denominator? Is it because oh, of oh. the- uh, Quartile, quarter, what does quarter mean? Oh, okay. So um, it's because the first quartile, you need to put four in the denominator yeah. and two. Second quartile. Um, so, second quartile, so second use quartile two. Uh, yeah, think about it. First quartile is one fourth. What second quartile? Uh, two over four. Two fourths, yeah. Which okay. is the median, which is one half. Two divided median, by four, yeah. one over two. Okay. Third quartile, okay. three over four. Now, if I called it a percentile, instead of writing one fourth, it's the 25th percentile. What's 25 over 100? 0.25, which is the same as one fourth. One fourth is the quartile. So a lot, and okay. all these terms, I may give you, you know, sometimes you have to convert from decimal to fraction or whatever, but they all mean the same thing, you know? So yeah, but thank you, yeah. Yes, that's what I'm talking about. So uh, determine the 67th percentile and the 72nd percentile for the following frequency distribution using the Weibull method. So now we're going to use the Weibull method, which just means n plus one. Okay, so <clears throat> technique will always be the same. So you have a frequency distribution. Let's find the cumulative frequency distribution of three plus four, seven plus two, nine. So let's determine the 67th percentile. So 0.67 times n plus one, 6.7. So the integer part is six, the fractional part 0.7. So to compute the 67th percentile, I'll do uh, the complement of 70% is 30%. So 30% of X sub six plus 70% of X sub the next one after six is seven, X sub seven. So now we got to figure out what each of these guys are. So it's 30% of the number in the sixth position. Well, let's see. Let's find the first time my cumulative frequency is greater than six here. Therefore, the number is three. And so X of six is three. Let's find the number in the seventh position. Oh, 
weight, it's always also going to be three. And so if you add these up, you get three. Let's find the 72nd um, percentile. And so 0 0.72 times, well, nine plus one is 7.2. So the integer part is seven and the fractional part is 0 0.2. And so let's figure out 80% of the number in the seventh position plus 20% of the number in the next position, the eighth position. So the number in the seventh position is three. So 80% of three plus the number in the eighth position will be four plus 20% of four. And so 80% of three plus 20% of four is 3.2. Let's do, oh, it's not quite the same numbers. Uh, let's do, uh, and it's not the same distribution, so it doesn't matter. Uh, let's do the uh, 67th and 73rd. Oh, and it's group frequency distribution. Uh, let's do the 67th and 73rd percentile for the following group frequency distribution using the California method. So let's use the California method. So first, I'm going to have to find the cumulative frequencies. So three plus four is seven, plus two is nine, plus one is 10, plus two is 12. So let's find the 67th percentile. For the California method, it's just N, 12, times 0 0.67, 8.04. And so, Let's find the first time a cumulative frequency is greater than or equal to 8.74, 30. And so it wins at nine. Therefore, the, 30, the class 30 to 40 is my percentile class. So the lower class limit is 30. The class width is 10. The corresponding frequency is two. K is 8.04. And the cumulative frequency for the class preceding is seven. And so I get 35.2. Let's find the 43rd percentile. So uh, 12 times 0.43 is 5.16. Oh, so in this case, oops. The First time my cumulative frequency is greater than 5.16 when it's equal to seven. And so my percentile class is the class 20 to 30. And so I have here that L is equal to 20 plus the class width is 10. The frequency is four times K, which is 5.16 times the cumulative frequency for the class seeding, which is three. And so I get 25.4. So one of the things to note is that the percentiles might be different uh, depending upon uh, the different methods that you use. So, Let's do the 43rd percentile rather than using the California method. Let's use the WIPO method. So let's see if I get 25.4. Well, we have this, it's the same uh, frequency, good frequency distribution. So three plus four, seven plus two, nine plus 110 plus 212. So the 43rd, the position K, the 43rd percentile is N 12 plus 1, 13 times 0 0.43, 5.59. 
And so the uh, percentile class is the class 20 to 30. The lower class limit is 20 plus H, the class width 10, divided by the frequency four times uh, the position. Um, so the position here is A, which is 5.59. 5.59 minus 3, the cumulative frequency for the preceding class. And so the uh, preceding frequency is 3. And so if you plug that in, you get 26.4. Uh, seven five. Okay. Um, so that uh, ah. so let's compute the percentile using several differing uh, definitions. So again, let I be the integer part. Let A let F be the fractional part. So let's list. The different methods. So the California method, also called weighted average at x sub np linear interpolation method. So k is equal to np and so it is the formula says that to find the percentile it's just x sub i times 1 minus f plus x sub i plus 1 times f. The empirical distribution function, sometimes also called the inverse empirical CDF method. Again, k is equal to n times p. I will compute the percentile using the following formula. It will equal x sub i if f is equal to zero, it'll equal x of i plus one if f is not equal to zero. The empirical distribution function interpolation mode-based method. k is equal to n minus one p. The percentile is then equal to x sub i plus one times one minus f plus x of i plus 2 times f. True basis statistics graphics toolkit. Uh, this is a product by uh, Microsoft uh, used for uh, many of its, uh, the way that, that it displays uh, graphics on the, on the screen. It's a very strange formula. It's a backwards formula. So, let k equal n plus 1p. It's equal to x of i if f is 0. And it's equal to 1 minus f, x of i plus 1, plus f and x of i if f is not equal to 0. So notice that it is sort of backwards from everyone else. So for everyone else, they have i, i plus 1. And so they have the lower number here is 1 minus f. And the higher number, the next number is f. Here it's the opposite way around. So here, uh, the lower number, 1 minus f, higher number, f. Again, here it's backwards. So everyone else has it done in the proper way. Uh, Microsoft has it done strangely backwards. So meaning that it, 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 if f is zero, you're at x of i. If f is slightly greater than zero, all of a sudden you become close to i plus one, and then you approach until you get down to f equals zero, then you all of a sudden jump back up to i plus one, and then you jump to i plus two and then keep going down. 
until you jump to I plus three, and then you keep going down, then you jump. So it keeps, it's this weird sort of jumping thing that it does here. Okay, so Weigel method. The way to average X of N plus one P linear interpolation method. So you let K, it's basically the same as California method. It's just that you let K equal N plus one P. So that's the only difference. Then the percentile is X of I times one minus F times X of I plus one times F. The empirical distribution function averaging method. Let K equal NP. The percentile is X of I plus X of I plus one over two if F is zero. Otherwise is equal to I, X of I plus one if F is not zero. The closest observation element, number closest to Q uh, and method. So let K equal NP plus a half, then the percentile is just equal to X of I. The Excel old method version. This has, well, K is the same as like in the Weibull method. So K is equal to N plus one P. The percentile is X of I if F is less than 0.5. It is the average in the middle, X of I plus X of I plus one over two if F is equal to uh, 0.5, if it is in the middle. And it's equal to X of I plus one if F is greater than 0.5. So this is, it basically always stays at X of I until it's at the midway point. Then it goes to halfway. And when it's exactly halfway there, and then it goes to the other end point uh, afterwards. So hydrologist linear interpolation method. It's gonna be the same as the Scoso observation method. Uh, let K in the, along with interpolation. Let K equal NP plus a half. <clears throat> oh, good. So let K equal NP plus a half. Then the percentile has the following formula. It's just equal to X of I times one minus F plus X of I plus one times F. The median base method, K is equal to three N plus one P plus one all divided by three. But again, it's the same interpolation formula for almost all of them. It's uh, X of I times one minus F plus X of I plus one times F. And the normal distribution estimate, that K equals three plus two P times 4n plus 1, all divided by 8. Then again, the same interpolation method. Uh, x of i times 1 minus f plus x of i plus 1 times f. So you notice that for the vast majority, you have the same interpolation formula. Well, actually, this is also the same, really. So you have this, you really, it's the same as this interpolation, same as this. Is this, is this, is this. These are all the same interpolation formulas, um, except for uh, this one, which is backwards. <clears throat> okay, so let's do an example. So I'm giving you 11 different methods. Uh, it would be nice to see, well, to do an example involving calculating maybe a percentile, let's say the 42nd percentile for these 11 different methods. So organize the raw data, two, two, three, four, five, five, six, six, as a frequency distribution, compute the 42nd percentile using the 11 different definitions of the percentile above. So I gave you 11 different uh, formulas 
compute the percentile using those 11 formulas. So, California method, also called weighted average X sub NP linear interpolation method. K is equal to NP. And so nine, oh, so let's figure out what they gave it to us. And so um, N is nine, P is 0.42. And so we get 3.78. So I want to do one minus, so the complement of 0.78 is 0.22. So 0.22 of the number in the third position times 78% of the number in the uh, next position, the fourth position. So the number in the third position is two. The number in the fourth position is three. So 22% of two and 78% of three is 2.78. Next, empirical distribution function, also called inverse empirical CDF method. K is equal to N times P. So 0.42 times nine, so same thing, 3.8, uh, 3.78. So it just says, well, if F is not zero, well, there is a fractional part. And so if there is a fractional part, then it's equal to the next one. So the next one after three is four. So the number in the fourth position is three. So therefore the um, 42nd percentile is the number three. So notice I get 2.78, a different number three, for the different formula. The empirical distribution function interpolation uh, mode based method. So let k equal n minus 1 p, so 9 minus 1, 8 times 0 0.42, 3.36. So we have the number in the next position. So I'll take the complement of 36%, 64% of the number in the fourth position, plus, well, the number in the next position is the fifth number, uh, plus 36% of the number in the fifth position. The number in the fourth position is three. So 64% of three plus, 30%, 36% of four is 3.36. Two basic graphics toolkit. So K is equal to N plus one P. So nine plus one, 10 times 0.42 is 4.2. Well, that's certainly not equal to zero. The 0.2 is not zero. So I'll do an interpolation. And so it is 20% of the number in the fourth position. 20% of three plus 80% of the number in the next position, which is four. So I get 3.8, yet a different number. So four differing calculations, four differing numbers for the 42nd percentile. Let's use the Weibull method, also called the weighted average at X sub N plus one P linear interpolation method. So N nine plus one, 10 times 0 0.42, 4.2. .2. So the integer part is four, the fractional part is 0.2. So let's find 80% uh, of the number in the fourth position plus 20% of the number in the next position, the fifth position. Number in the fourth position is three, number in the next position is four. So 80% of four plus 20% of three is 3.8. So um, four, 
I'm sorry, I'm looking at the wrong thing. So 80% of three plus 20% of four is 3.2. I said the wrong thing. Um, so therefore we have five differing numbers that we, five differing answers that we've found. The empirical di distribution function uh, averaging method. So NP, nine times 0 0.42, 3.78. So this is not zero. So 0.78 is not zero. So we find the number in the fourth position, which is three. Finally, a duplicate. Um, the closest observation element number closest to uh, QN method. So I'll take N times P, nine times 0.42, add to it a half, 4.28. Take the number in the fourth position, which is three. Excel old version method. So N nine plus one, 10, P 0.42 is 4.2. So I'll round this 4.2 to four. So it's the number in the fourth possession, which is three. The hydrologist linear interpolation method. K is equal to N nine times P 0.42 plus a half. 4.28. So I will take 72% of the number in the fourth position plus 28% of the number in the fifth position. So I'll take 72% of three and 28% of four. And so that's 3.28. The median base estimate. So the position is three times N, nine, 27 plus one, 28, plus 0.42, plus one divided by three, 4.25 to the degree. And so we will take the complement of this, 0.746, so 74.66% uh, of the number in the ninth position, the fourth position, plus 25.33% of the numbers in the next position, the fifth position. So 74.66% um, of three plus 25.33% of four is 3.2533. The normal distribution estimate. K is equal to three plus two times P 0.42 times the quantity four times N nine 36 plus one 37, all divided by eight. And so I get 4.26. So you want to do 74% of the number in the fourth position three plus 26% of the number in the fifth position, four. So that's gonna be 3.26. So you notice that uh, you get like eight differing numbers. So I, I believe it was eight uh, differing numbers uh, for these differing formulas for the 42nd percent. So uh, note that if you try to do this on a, a computer and you're not able to choose which formula to use, you may get uh, different answers depending on what formula they decide to use uh, as a default. Uh, please note that the, especially like TI is very famous for just changing the formulas they use for percentiles and not telling you. So, a five number summary. A five number summary is, well, five numbers. It is the following five numbers. 
the M, the minimum value, Q, the first quartile, Q sub one, the first quartile, Q sub two, the second quartile, or the median, Q sub three, the third quartile, lastly, the well, Q sub four, the maximum, or M, the maximum value. So if I ask you to find a five number summary, you list those five numbers. An outlier. Oh, I guess recall that the inner quartile range is the third quartile minus the first quartile. So outliers, these are sample values that lie very far from the vast majority of the other sample values. They can have a dramatic effect on the mean, on the standard deviation, on the scale of a histogram, uh, such that uh, the true nature of the distribution can be totally obscured due to the fact that uh, it puts the scale so that you can't see other changes uh, easily. A box plot, or something called a box and whisker plot, is a graphical representation of a five number summary. And so, uh, here it is. So, a box plot would be the minimum value gives you one end of my whisker. The, maxim, the maximum value gives me my other end of this whisker. The first quartile and the third quartile give me this box. And the middle of the box is denoted, or the median gives me this inside of the box. So a box plot or box and whisker plot is some representation of the five number summary. It's a graphical representation of this five number summary. So if we have outliers, then we do the following for a box and whisker plot. We draw, we plot the first quartile and the third quartile. Make this into a box. Then we draw the median, wherever the median is located, to divide this box at that point. We then will determine the interquartile range, which is the size of this box. I will then go out one and a half interquartile ranges past the box. I will then find the maximum value within it, one and a half interquartile ranges of the box, draw my whisker out to that distance. I will find one and a half interquartile ranges below the first quartile and find the minimum value in that range. That will give me my other whisker. I'll draw my whisker down to that minimum value within one and a half interquartile ranges of the uh, first quartile. And so that gives me my box and whisker. Now, if I am between one and a half and three interquartile ranges above or below the box, then I will draw solid circles to indicate the existence of mild outliers at those points. If I'm more than three interquartile ranges uh, from the box, then I will draw an open circle and that will be an extreme outlier. So my box consists of the first quartile, in the third quartile, and I will also draw a line for the median. My whisker will extend to the largest and smallest values 
within one and a half interquartile ranges of the box. My mild outliers will be between one and a half and three interquartile ranges of the box. My extreme outliers are more than three interquartile ranges from the box. So I have here my first quartile, my third quartile, that gives me this little box here. And here's the median. This is the smallest data. This is the smallest number. So that's my whisker. Now I go one and a half in the quartile ranges from the third quartile in this case and I find the maximum value that gives me this other whisker. Now, I go between one and a half and three and a quartile ranges of this third quartile, and that gives me these mild outliers. Okay. <clears throat> For a nice symmetric, normal distribution. Notice that my whiskers are about the same length and my median is in the middle of this box. For a box plot, for a positively skewed distribution, well, notice that this whisker on the right extends a very long distance. The whisker on the left does not extend very far. The median is pulled over to the, well, notice that, so this whisker, this median here is closer to the first quartile than it is to the third quartile. So notice that, um, and, and, and similarly, if you just, take a mirror image of this, then uh, that's what a negatively uh, skewed distribution will, will usually look like. So notice that uh, if you look inside the box, it sort of looks like what it does outside the box. So certainly if you have a positively skewed uh, distribution, then it will look something like this. Well, no, if they say, I said it the wrong way. If your, if your box plot looks like this, then, this, then it is a positively skewed distribution. Uh, it doesn't necessarily have to look like this. If it's a, a positively skewed distribution, the box plot may not look quite like this. So let's compute the first, second, and third quartiles for the following data using the Weibull method. So three, zero, two, one, one, two, five, one. So first, sort the data. So uh, remember your data must be sorted. So don't forget to sort your data. So zero, one, 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 two, two, three, five. Let's find the first quartile. So K is one fourth N plus one. So there are two, four, six, eight numbers. So eight plus one, nine divided by four, 2.25. So let's find 25%. So 75% of the number in the second position uh, plus 25% of the number in the third position. So if you add that up, you're just going to get one. Let's find the median, the second quartile. And so the second quartile is uh, one half n eight plus one, so 4.5. And so let's find the number in the fourth position, two, four. Oh, and so I'm going to take 50% of the number in the fourth position plus another 50% of the number in the uh, next position and add those up. And so you're going to get uh, 1.5. Let's find the third quartile. 
So three fourths times n plus one. So uh, three fourths times eight plus one, nine, 27 divided by four, 6.75. So take the number in the two fourths, sixth position. 25% of two plus 75% of the number in the next position, three to give you 2.75. So let's compute the five number summary using the Weibull method for the numbers 0, 3, uh, 3, 0, 2, 1, 1, 2, 5, 1. Well, it's the one we just did. So uh, let's find the smallest number, 0. First quartile 1, second quartile 1.5, third quartile 2.75, and then the largest number is 5. So therefore, these five numbers give me my five number summary. And if you plot that, uh, that uh, or a graphical representation of those uh, five number summary is the box plot. These data give blood pressure for 15 patients who visited the emergency room of a hospital, give a five number summary and a box plot uh, for the data using the white hole method. So 200, 171, 90, 160, 168, 180, 185, 205, 172, 150, 170, 209, 200, 150, 155. So you sort your data. Let's sort my data. The minimum is 150. First quartile is, well, <clears throat> we have 15 plus one is 16 divided by four is four. So the number in the fourth position, 160. For the second quartile, one half times uh, 15 plus one, eight. So the number in the eighth position, 72. Third quartile, three fourths times 15 plus one, 12. The number in the 12th position, 200. And so my five number summary is 150, 160, 172, 200, and the largest number, 209. And so my box plot, so that's my five number summary. My box plot is, well, 150, 160, 172, 200, 209. That's my box plot. Compute first and second quartiles for the following data using the Weibull method. Then use Excel old method. So uh, 1.4, 3.14, 5.3, 7.1, 8, 9.4, 10 .1. Already sorted, so don't have to worry about sorting. Weibull method. So K is equal to 1 fourth N. There are nine, eight numbers there, so 9 plus 8 plus 1, 9, divided by 4, 2.25. So Second position. So I want to find 75% of 3.1 plus 25% of 4, 3.325. Uh, find the second quartile for the Weibull method. So 1 fourth, uh, I'm sorry, 2 fourths, 1 half times n, 8 plus 1, 4.5. So let's take the number 1, 2, 3, 4. 50% of 5.3 plus another 50% of 7.1. So I get 6.2. Let's use Excel old method to find the first quartile. And so one, well, it'll be the same as above. One four times uh, eight plus one, 2.25. So, uh, you get you round the two, so the number in the second position, 
Let's find the second quartile, the median. And so one half N, eight plus one, 4.5. So I find the average of the two numbers since it's a since it's halfway in between these two numbers, then you find its average of these two numbers. So 5.3 plus 7.1. 6.2, same as what we got previously. So just recall, uh, mean, expected value of x, sum of x over n, median was the middle value, mode was the most frequent value, in a trend mean, you trim both the largest and smallest values. In a geometric mean, it is 10 to the expected value of the log of x. The harmonic mean is expected value, is the reciprocal of the expected value of the reciprocals. The root mean square is the square root of the expected value of x squared. And the mid range is just um, minimum plus the maximum divided by two. And there were a whole bunch of Excel commands that you, that we used. Okay. So that really finishes off section 3.3. .3.